Nope. Yep. All right. Dead Man's Tone Podcast. Your host, Mr. Dead Man, Becky and SK. How's it going, guys? Hey. Fine. How Howdy. Becky is back from the plague. Yay. She is. She is but now and I now have Jesse a plague. And now Jesse has it. Yep. And do you How want to How did know? you get it? Well, uh, I, I had a hooker over. And uh, oh, I wanted to know Lord. what the $20 deal would be. She was like, you could smell my ass for that. So I did that. And now. Now, <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. $20? <laughs> I, I want a discount, okay? I didn't have a lot of money on me, okay? I wanted, the, I wanted a discount offer. No, don't you know? You, you know better than that. You have There's to some know things, better than that. There are some things you don't skimp on. You know, like. That's, I was yeah. going to say. Right. <laughs> you don't skip on that? You know, so no, you, you don't. You don't skip on anything, you know, surgical. And right, you don't. that's not a good idea. <laughs> no, <laughs> medicine, you know, and pussy. Like that's those are things that really, you know, you really want to put the extra money into. You know. Okay, I'll take that advice. You know what? I tell you, you what. <laughs> you don't want a group on. No group. Yeah. On. <laughs> <laughs> or a group discount. <laughs> right, oh, man. <laughs> So you can help me. Oh, You'll wow. see on the screen the donations for hooker money. All those donations will come in, and we'll go to Andy. We'll go to Andy for his hooker fund, okay? Hey, you're not dipping into my hooker fund, man. <laughs> I'm trying to get... No, he's trying to get money for you. Oh, well, there you go. Money. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Shit over. Donate, donate yeah. to Andy's hooker fund. Totally That's not right. mine. <laughs> and by the way, other, other announcement before we do the ads. Uh, 51 followers on uh, Stream Me. If we get a hundred followers, fifty dollar Amazon gift card is given away. Uh, so, do that. Whoa, do that. Okay. Yeah, and we've almost and, got as many and, people on the show as that are listening. Yeah, right. <laughs> 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 uh, we'll get more. We'll get more. Yeah, on, guys. And, and, we'll get more. And, we'll get more. And, and tell me again, how how many um, followers do we have to have to get your crack wax? Uh, I think it is a hundred. I don't know. Oh, is that it? it? Was. Mm-hmm. It's a hundred followers, and I get my ass crack wax. Holy hell, mm-hmm. man! That might be the. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm gonna well, that's awesome. the screen. Right? Wow. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, Becky says we got to pay for the, you know, for the, the stuff. <laughs> pay for it all. Read the ads real fast. <laughs> and we'll get into this. Okay. <laughs> the first one is from Robert Wright Jr. On October 31st, 2017, at 1 p.m., there were 7.6 billion people living on Earth. At 1.01 p.m., a blinding flash, nine-tenths of them died, or so we thought. For one survivor, the day changed everything. Follow Tanya's adventure as she lives in a ravaged world inhabited by mutants, undead, and aliens. Extinction Effect up- Undead Uprising is available in paperback and ebook at your favorite online retailers. Visit whichwaybooks.com today. And the next one is, And Hell Followed has been unleashed by newcomers Death's Head Press. This anthology brings seasoned veterans such as Rath James White, Sisters of Slaughter, Jeff Strand, and Christine Morgan, together with newer authors like Wiley Young, Chris Miller, and Delphine Quinn, to paint a hellish and sometimes hilarious vision of what might happen if the four horsemen were turned loose in our unsuspecting world. Sixteen tales in all, themed around the book of Revelation. It would be a sin not to read this book. As Rat James White says so eloquently in the introduction, no blasphemy has been left unblasphemed. And that is available on Amazon.com. Very cool. And it is live and very good. Rath James White is pretty fucking awesome. I just discovered him this year, but he is fucking great. Yeah, he he really is. Have you read Four Hundred Days of Oppression? Uh, if the question's for me, I have not. Read it. You'll I will. love it. It's unbelievable. Uh, he's in our. Uh, I've got that anthology coming out in a couple of months. He's in that, and um, you know, it was funny. As soon as I read some of his stuff, I said, "Shit, we got to get him." And uh, yeah, I like good. him a lot. Yeah, he's really so, good. So you got more ads? I'm done. 
Okay. I didn't know if you had like sex toy ads or, you know, or they're all books. I didn't know. <laughs> oh, like, that, that's the next on. thing. We got to get a sponsor for, our, uh, you know, Cthulhu dildos, you know. Cthulhu dildos. <laughs> oh, there my you go. Lord. They exist. They exist. And I actually did reach oh out to God. the manufacturer to see if they want to come on the show. Uh, because I don't Shut know why. Um, I did. I did. Shut up. No. <laughs> I am not trying them. I, okay. So. <laughs> I'll, well, Jesse's going to. for two hundred followers. <laughs> Jesse, will. Jesse will stick a Cthulhu dildo. <laughs> I don't know about that. Don't will you, know about will that. you go? Will you go one. ATM for like how many followers do you have to go to go ATM with the the Cthulhu dildo? Oh, you my, god. <laughs> oh my god! I don't know. I don't know about this one. I don't know about this one. <laughs> Five hundred followers. <laughs> <laughs> One hundred and fifty. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Okay. Oh. All right, Andy. I do have news stories, though. Unless, well, oh, you're doing it. Well, let's get into You're the doing facts. Andy next? Yeah. Oh, I so mean, I tell him who I am, too, because you said Andy, but. Yeah. Andy who? And Andy, Andy Griffin? Who? We don't. Andy, that's right. Andy Roush. Andy Kaufman? Andy oh, Andy Roush. Roush. Who's that guy? Oh, my God, you pronounced it right. I know. No one does that. Of it, course, I've been on three times, so. Yeah. Yeah, but that doesn't so, make any difference. This is so Jesse. We know who you are. <laughs> But for those right. who haven't heard of you, or I don't know who that would be, but in those listening for the first time, who are you and what do you do? I am a writer. I write uh, books, comics, a little bit of everything, um, and I'm a heart transplant recipient. So there you go. That is me in a nutshell. And a dad. And a dad. And That's a right. dad. Mm-hmm. I do some shit. That's what I do. Man. How long ago was your transplant? A lot of shit. Uh, my transplant was in April. And if oh, my voice geez. sounds funny, it's because I've had a cold. So it kind of, <laughs> at times, sounds like I'm a boy going through puberty. It goes from deep to like, <laughs> ah, but that's why. Mm. <laughs> that's okay. I'm over here s- <laughs> sniffing like uh, all the time. We know, you know. you're sniffing. <laughs> we know what you're really doing. Don't worry. <laughs> I thought maybe you were sniffing some more of that $20 hooker ass. Uh, I didn't know. <laughs> oh, oh God. I can't, I can't take more of that. I'm going to live with that right. for the rest of my life. Maybe. Hopefully not. Maybe. Man, Until your you, nose falls off. In a, uh, you know, when you say you're, you're an author, you have like a no, – you have like what? Like 34 – 37. 37? Well, um, hopefully – actually, 36 that are either in print or about to be in print. Some of those are reprinted uh, more than once. So, But, but 37 original books uh, – but the thirty seventh one right now, I'm trying to get a publisher. Um, Death Head, Death's Head Press is looking at it. So, uh, if anybody from there hears that, uh, you better buy that motherfucker. That's what I'm saying. Um, <laughs> but right now, thirty six <laughs> books in a, either published or coming. I didn't know, and I actually counted them the other day, and I was like, "Whoa, it's a lot of fucking books." So, still poor as hell, but it looks really good on a resume. Yes, so, is. so you only have a forty-seven foot yacht, right? I, that's right. I've got this short yacht. That's right. It's like Donald Trump. I, I say I have more than I really have, but you know, nobody know. People are so poor they don't know the difference, and so that's all right. Man, I got a rowboat <laughs> with with no fucking oars. I just put my hands on the water and. In, in SK asked about your heart transplant, but there's a story to that. Uh, that I don't think SK has yes. heard before. You feel you feel about sharing that? I share, definitely right? haven't. How do you feel about sharing that? Well, I want to share a real condensed version, I guess, if I do it. What, I don't know. I uh, got sick when I was 21. I was in the Army. Uh, I got a virus when I was in Egypt. I came back. I got sick. They said I needed a heart transplant. I got better. <coughs> Didn't need the heart transplant until I was 45. Well, actually, I needed it when I was about 43. I almost died. I did actually die twice. Had a defibrillator that brought me back to life, um, but I'm here, man. It's it's great. Wow. I'm working my ass off trying to get shit done. And from a virus, from a virus, they don't know what it was. Um, were but, you, like, you know, were you raiding a like a pyramid or something? Like like what happened? Yeah. <laughs> I don't I can't know. tell you. It's top secret. Well, it was that camel fucking. Actually, you got to watch out when you fuck the camel. You really do. Like, uh, I mean, if you, they say if you wear a condom, you're probably all right. But I was trying to go. You know, um, I, just, I was yeah. young. You know, I was you like could roll the dice. and I thought I'm just going to go for this. 
uh, camel ass, and it didn't work out. Yeah, but you don't go for the ones that are inside the tombs. <laughs> right, right. That's even worse. You know, I went in the I went in the pyramids, and I actually did do that. That's not a <coughs> joke. But I went down in the pyramids, and it's this little bitty, little bitty um, tunnel that goes down in there. And there were people right in front of me, people right behind me, and I had all. I got halfway down and realized. Um, I had fucking claustrophobia and I was freaking out. So I get down there in the bottom oh and I God. breathe and I was like, oh my God, I feel so good. And then it dawns on me, I have to go all the way back through it to get out. Right. So that wasn't the best moment ever, but you know, at least I've got, uh, I got a story to tell about it all these years later and, uh, and heart disease. So, you know, it's a win-win for everybody, I guess. <laughs> win-win for the hospital. They got about a million dollars. So, <laughs> Hey, Let's right? see. Travel plans. Scratch Egypt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. Well, no. I mean, the heart disease is good stuff. <laughs> I mean, you you yeah. almost died twice, right? So you right. you seen death. You seen the other side. I get. You know, people were saying. So, did you see God? Did you see anything? Man, I didn't see shit. I, uh, I you know, I, I didn't really even know what happened. I just kind of woke up, and people were looking at me in tears, and. <laughs> And it was pretty apparent what happened, and and then it happened again. Um, but I didn't see anything. There was no revelation. You know, yeah, um, I've, I've, I've heard... I thought about making up some shit and writing a book about it. You know, <laughs> see if I could get rich on it. Did you could? I see these books. That, I see these books at Walmart where the you know people talk about they died, and I think there's one called Seven Minutes in Hell. You know, and mm-hmm. it seems like to get a 250 page book out of seven minutes, that's a hell of a feat. Oh, you know, there's like a page for every second, you know. But but you could do it. Come on, you have like 37 projects. You could definitely do it. Ah, I mean, you died uh, twice. You if know, anybody could do it, twice. he could. Skip the book. Skip the book, man. You want to start a cult. Well, mine's, I'm going to do better. Mine's going to be eight minutes in hell. That's right. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> hey, you, Andy. You, you, you turn that shit into a cult and you'll really rake right. it in. Well, hey, L. Ron oh, Hubbard Lord. showed us the way, you know. I mean, you can be a writer right. and just one day, you know. I think I'm gonna start a religion, and well, shit, it worked for him. It did, so, you know. And his mindset was exactly that, man. It's like, and he yeah. didn't even have near death experiences to draw on. No, no. no. Man. Andy, Justin, Justin Hodges says to keep strong. Hey, thank you, Justin strong, Hodges. Brother. That's fucking awesome. Go buy my books, man. But, <laughs> but no, really, <laughs> thanks, man. That's cool. He's in our chat. Oh yeah, awesome. I see that. I see that. Oh, by the way, if it says troll next to your name. All you have to do is register and, and follow, and then all that will be taken care of. All right. Um, unless, unless you like being called a troll. That's right. Know, Some right? people might. It might be like a fetish, you know? Ooh. Troll Call fetish. me troll. Oh, yeah. my goodness. Ooh. That's right. Man, we're getting all, all sorts of weird here. <laughs> we are. So, man. <laughs> you we're going to have some news, Becky. What happened to the news? Well, we have news, but... Oh. Well, do you want to hop into the news now? We can let's do that. Let's, let's oh, I didn't it. know. I'm just we we go with I'm the good. flow. We go we go wherever the guest wants to go, pretty much. Becky, what do we have on the news? Oh, I, mean, oh, I want to go. We just talk about my books forever, but that was news. <laughs> well, good, man. <laughs> we will. Oh, we um, will. We got plenty of time. <laughs> okay, the first one is, um, y'all are gonna die when I say this. Florida mm-hmm. Taco Bell, of course, Florida evacuated. Of course. Uh huh. After fisherman finds grenade, drives to the restaurant before calling 911. Ocala, Florida, a Florida Taco Bell was temporarily evacuated after a man found a grenade and then drove to the restaurant before alerting police. He was fishing. Okay. That's all weird. That's really weird. He found found a grenade fishing. And he thought, Mm -hmm. you know where I need to take this? Taco Bell. Taco Bell. Because, you know, get a <laughs> chalupa, you know, you got your grenade. Shit, yeah, you're all good. Let, get that Baja Mountain Dew. Come on, man. <laughs> let's fart and blow us all to kingdom come. Um, so I got something to show in, you. And, I got something to show you. It'll blow you away. That's right. <laughs> oh, hey, my Lord. Could I, could I get a, uh, a bean burrito for this grenade? You know, that could work. <laughs> you don't know. He put it in the trunk of his vehicle <laughs> and then went in. Right. Oh wow! So, so it's in the trunk. How did anybody know? Yeah, I'm kind of. Um, he called the police while he was there. Um, oh, it was from. <laughs> yeah, I'll be honest. I'm eating these like crispitos. You know, like. 
it let the police World handle this while I'm having my chalupa. <laughs> Can you imagine what it would be like to be a cop in Florida? Because oh, every no. fucked up story you hear is from Florida. Like, yeah. At least two right. out of every three. Dude. I cannot imagine. You're gonna what have, the like, hell? People will try to wrestle <laughs> gators. <laughs> right. Drunk fishermen bringing grenades to Taco Bell. <laughs> meth. A it's not, every other story grenade. I hear is about meth in Florida. Dude, oh, meth. the gators are on meth. Can you imagine gators on meth? There's your next anthology, Jesse. Gators Locking. on meth. <laughs> gators. Oh, no. Meth, meth ga- gators versus Nazis. There we go. Oh, shit. Oh. No. You know what we haven't gotten to is the uh, oh. Monsters versus Nazis. Yes. A very original project. Yeah, it's very original. Very original. So, uh, <laughs> week, week. so I see you you ripped off my book. That's cool, man. <laughs> you want to talk about that? Uh, and, I, and of course, I'm joking if anybody hears this, but um, but it, but it is my idea. But you know what was funny though? I think we talked about this before when we did our book M Company, like which is Monsters versus Nazis. It was originally called Monsters versus Nazis too, uh-huh. but we were midway through it and we found out that there was a comic book in the '70s that actually had this same premise. So it wasn't original to us either. So shit, and uh, there might as well just be a whole fucking genre of Monsters versus Nazis. It but, could be. It should be. Oh uh, no! There's plenty and of I've never read that comic book because I was afraid it would fuck. I, I was afraid it would fuck up what we were writing, and I didn't want to be influenced by it. Mm. But I also didn't want to see right. if it was too close, so I was like, I'm just going to stay away from it. Well, but, look, look at me. Look, I'll be completely honest. Yeah, when we're talking about that, that was a very rich idea, man. That's a great, right, it's a cool idea, fucking idea. And you're talking about, it, I was like, man, Monster vs. Nazis is a great title, but it was like M Company. I was like, man, I don't know if I had it. I would probably take it like a more gonzo approach and just call right, it right. Monster vs. Nazis. But right. and and that's their pub- the publisher could do whatever they want, That's I, I guess. Right. Uh, and, but, and I wasn't really going to do anything with it. But then <coughs> some people were like, hey, that actually sounds like a pretty cool idea. Maybe you could. I was like, okay, okay. Well, you know what? Let's have fun with it. I want to see Frankenstein oh. and Dracula like tag team take on the Third Reich, a couple of badasses. So, so I want to write something, you know, to, to pitch or to throw your way for this. But I'm curious. So in yours, is it only the the classic monsters? Are we having all kinds of monsters? Just uh, sky's the limit. What are we doing? All kinds. I mean, okay. the cover, the cover pretty much is like I think. Well, the the original cover, I thought there was like a Cthulhu looking monster, but it looks like just oh. hell demons and like. You know, it's classic monsters. Classic monsters. Right. Uh, you can have Cthulhu in there, I guess, but it's not like a Lovecraft versus Nazis. But right, it's whatever. You can have mummies. You can have. I guess you could have zombies yetis. in there. You can have yetis. <laughs> right. Oh my lord. There was an old, uh, I think, eighties uh, B horror movie that was about Nazis turning into zombies. Right. Well, so there, you like know, there are a bunch of Nazi lake zombies or something like, like that. Oh, right. That's real. Well, yeah. You know, there's a whole bunch of um, uh, Nazi zombie movies now. Like, there are quite a few. Um, and uh, I think it's a cool genre. I really do. Um, was it Dead Snow? Yeah, there's a couple of those, aren't there? Yeah, yeah. There was one that they were shooting overseas, and they were looking for extras. And at one time, I really thought about going and... And, uh, you know, because they were like, anybody that comes can be a zombie. And I was like, this is going to be fucking badass. I think it might have been that. I can't remember. It was in that same era. But that, so that was a really long, unimportant story. But there you go. Oh, we have a question in the <laughs> chat, by the way. Um, Andy, I really enjoyed writing Shotgun. What projects do you have in the works now? Uh, well, I've got a novella coming out March 29th that I'm very excited about. Uh, that's the mm-hmm. one I mentioned before. It's a revenge story. It's sort of a anti-KKK revenge story about a father that uh, his son's been lynched. He's going after the Klan in Georgia, oh, and that's called Bloody Sheets. It's coming out from uh, close to the bone. And then sometime in fall, I have a novel coming out from uh, Crime Wave Press, and it, the same publisher that did writing Shotgun, and it is called Layla's Score, and it's... Really, mostly about my little girl, um, who was seven at the time. So it's about this. It's basically about a hitman and his seven-year-old daughter. It didn't occur to me again. I was working on it, and then I realized how close it really is, in a way, to Road to Perdition, which is funny because I love Max Allen Collins, who wrote that, and he's actually in an anthology I've got coming out in a couple months. But um, 
Yeah, I mean, it's a different take on that, you know, and his wasn't anything really, you know, I mean, that's an old story. I mean, you know, that you had the baby cart movies in Japan, which were about mm-hmm. a samurai, you know, the lone wolf and cub movies. And that's sort of what he based that on. So I'm following the tradition, but mine's more about the, um, the relationship between the father and the little girl as they go through all these things. Because, you know, in Road to Perdition, it's great. It's just a different thing, you know, because the father and the son aren't really super close in that. It's not really about their dynamic as much as they're just on this thing together. But, gotcha. gotcha. Yeah, so there you go. I, I just rambled. I definitely want to read that. And that I have reminded a, me of the, the professional. Right. It Kind of like that, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know. I've always liked that kind of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> also, just a just a reminder out there in the chat: if you're watching, and you're not a follower yet. Feel free to follow, because if we reached a hundred goal. Not only is there a fifty dollar Amazon gift card giveaway, but apparently, <laughs> apparently my ass crack is going to get waxed. I don't, I don't know why they why I signed up for that, but apparently that's going to happen. So look at that. We, we only we only wax that into ass. those things when you're really drunk. Yeah, right. I noticed. Yeah, that. and it's so tonight. easy what to get you to. So you're not drinking this. tonight. So why are you not drinking tonight, man? What the fuck is that? <sighs> trying to trying to be be better. You know, my son saw me the uh. other day, passed out in the garage. Uh, he was like, Dad. <laughs> oh my God. What's wrong with you? Why? And he's like, Hey, it's uh, it's Saturday, so it's yep. just another Saturday. <laughs> uh, at the Deadman house. <sighs> <sighs> yep. Uh. So, uh, mm. where do we go from here? <laughs> uh, more news. <laughs> Becky, what's the news? I have news? another news story. Okay. Mm, okay. What's the next oh, news story? Well. <laughs> Fatal end to an alleged game of Russian roulette for St. Louis police officer. What? Oh, yeah. Yep. This yeah. A St. Louis police officer has been charged with manslaughter and the death of another officer, alleged by shooting her during a game of Russian roulette. Hmm. Don't you wait shooting oh, yeah. her? I mean, they she they don't herself. really understand how that's supposed to work. Obviously, yeah, <laughs> right. no, no, because um, she, <laughs> the officer, was shot in the chest while they were handing a revolver back and forth, taking turns pulling the trigger at each other. There you go. Mm-hmm. Um, that's not Russian roulette. That's just flat out homicide. That's just. I mean, <laughs> mm-hmm. He's Why? like, uh, hey, guess what? Want to play a game of Russian roulette? <laughs> One Why? of them. One of them was even on duty. On, on duty. So this is really this is what's really <coughs> fucked up about this, right? So they were one of them was on duty. They go over to his house. A Y. And B, so they decide to start playing this game with mm. guns, like mm. they don't know. These should definitely be people that are uh, protecting. The citizens um, of St. Louis. Is they sound meth? well up to yeah. is, is there like meth and alcohol involved? Because like, what the fuck is going no. on here? Are, are we sure yeah, about you that? You would think. You would certainly think <laughs> so Mass, because they said not. Hmm. Because you, they, how, do, you, how, how do you have this conversation? Hey, want to shoot each other? <laughs> <laughs> well, the, it, well, that'll be fun. And, and, he, and also <laughs> interesting was is that the. The officer that did the shooting, mm-hmm. their partner was there and had left the room when the shooting occurred. Hmm. Huh. And it was so like not third, only was, was one like of them the there shot, right? Or- right. And there I thought in St. Louis the cops only shot unarmed black people. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It was fucking Ferguson, <laughs> yeah. man. Look at it. But I spend a lot of time in St. Louis. It, it, St. Louis is pretty fucking wild, man. That's where uh, that's where I got my heart transplant. I spent. I talked to Becky a couple of weeks ago when I was in St. Louis, and man, it's mm-hmm. St. Louis is fucking crazy, man. Like somebody gets shot like every fucking day in St. Louis. It seems like. Well, and I guess part of them are cops shooting each other. So fuck. yeah, look at that. <laughs> yeah, apparently. Well, I, I mean, crazy. Not only were the the two people that were shooting at each other there and knew that that was going on, but the the cops' partner was there and knew it was going on and didn't do anything. I mean, hello. Like, how many people were in on this bad fucking decision? That's crazy. Like, well, you know, because you can see one. Per- that's what I'm saying. It's weird enough that one person thinks this is a good idea, but three fucking people thought this was a cool idea. Mm-hmm. The fuck, right. man? Yeah. 
Yeah, well, least, you know something. Something else hmm. is at play here. It has to be right. Yeah, yeah it's I not something you make when you're sober. That's not something when you. That's not a decision you make when you're thinking clearly. Obviously, yeah. And, and certainly like not. Cover up certainly story. not for three people. Was it like no. a night shift or something, or was it just during? No, the were really the fucking, fucking middle of the day. I think middle of the day. Yeah, it was. I'm oh, bored. Yeah. How about you? I got an idea. You know, it's like fuck. Should should they they could be arresting people, <laughs> right? <laughs> or shooting more people, shooting well, more black people. Right? <laughs> god damn it, man! Oh my god! <laughs> Sorry. Uh, oh my god! They could, they could oh, be- I mean, and when I said that, know that I'm not making fun of the black people. Like, this is a thing that pisses me off a lot, and I'm not going to lie. And you know, and um, people think I don't like cops. It's not that. Like my brother-in-law is a cop. I mean, he's great. I, I have nothing against cops as long as they're doing what the fuck they're supposed to be doing. But you know what? There right. are bad everything out there. There are bad podcasters. Yeah. There are bad mailmen, bad bakers, and there's bad cops. Mm-hmm. And the, the the thing that makes it look bad is because the other ones don't say anything. Yeah. Nine mm-hmm. times out of ten. And I know it's that, you know, that code where you don't. But, dude. And the other thing I think is really weird while we're on it. Have you ever seen any other occupation where... Like, okay, I don't know what you do in your life when you're not doing podcasts, Jesse, but what do you do in your regular life, man? Uh, I'm an investigator. Okay. Are you really? Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. So say that, I mean, are you a police investigator? No. I work no. with families. Okay. Because I didn't want to offend you here. But, but the thing is, you know, like say you're a mailman and you hear that a mailman killed somebody. Do you immediately go, he couldn't have fucking did it because he's a mailman? There's no other occupation in the world where everyone in it immediately defends the person without mm-hmm. knowing what the fuck went on. You know, well, and I was in the army for a lot of years, and that's dangerous too. But you know what? It doesn't surprise me when I hear that there are bad soldiers. I mean, There's I bad everything. Too, I can think of two other areas where people like to like to pretend or at least look the other way, maybe for their careers, like Hollywood and Catholic Church. And you know, politics. I guess, yeah, that's politics. a whole other thing. But I guess you're right. That that definitely happens in like, both of those. Yeah, I mean, and hell, political. they knew they knew Harvey Weinstein was doing that shit for years. <laughs> hell, they knew they know oh Brian Singer's doing shit. They would just cover his ass, uh, and that yep. they know the the priest is fucking kids. They just cover his okay, ass. Okay, dude. <laughs> look, and and look, I don't know, you know, about the Brian Singer thing. What's real and what's not. But I will, and I I talked to the man a little bit back in the day. But I will say this. You know, um, I was hearing these things 20 years ago. I live in fucking Kansas, okay? I wasn't even in Hollywood, but I was hearing it from people. You know, I've done all these books on film, and I know a lot of people in film. I was hearing these rumors in 1999, you know? And if they were that... Pro- it, I was hearing the Kevin Spacey rumors 20 years ago, you know? And if I'm fucking hearing it here, you know damn well there are people all over... Lo- you know the studio chiefs are hearing that shit, but they keep yeah. hiring these people. And I mean, I don't know if he did it or not, but I'm just saying that these are things, these are allegations that had been floating around for a long yeah. time. Uh, legally, these are allegations that we have heard <laughs> to, to protect us. Well, yeah, and I do want to stress that. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, another question. Oh, a bad joke. How many cops does it take to make a bad decision? It was in the chat. <laughs> Three? <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> oh. Mm. Oh. oh, man. Well, I, but if there are I any cops listening to news- this, we love you. Yeah. We love I good I do have cops. another news story. I'm <laughs> sure, sure. <coughs> what do we got? Are you, are you oh. sure? <laughs> oh, Lord. Are how you does, sure? How does it compare to... Um, no, I'm not sure. Um, Russian captain used to beat his soldiers with dildos. <laughs> oh, oh. Of course. Well, the old dildo but he stopped. beating. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, that happens all the time, shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you so want to go to the a, Stalag or do you want to get the, be with the dildo? Like, does it specify oh. where and how? Like, what is this? <laughs> we got to know details, man. Yeah. <laughs> we got to fucking know. This. Yeah, it did. It does. It, do we, um, okay. The beatings will continue until morale improves. Oh. This saying was often attributed to Captain William Bly during the mutiny on the Royal Navy vessel HMS Bounty was taken to heart, perhaps a bit too much and too erotically, by one Russian military commander who would routinely abuse his subordinates who fell even fractionally short of being impeccably squared away. Uh, you know there was one guy in that regiment that was like regiment that was like 
I kind of like being beat with the dildo. You know, he was tucking up extra. Like, Oops, my bad. I hit it. You know, you know that was happening. He was, he was dropping down and bending over. He's like, oh, right. that guy I've just been, just I've been bad. I've just been keeps, really bad. Oh, I dropped the soap. I've been naughty. By the way, you know how hard it was to <laughs> find this, an again, image. Again, it's not homophobia either. I'm just saying that you know there was a kinky dude. It could have been oh, any yeah. kind. Of, somebody's oh, yeah. got some kink. <laughs> There are all kinds of people that like to be probably beaten with dildos, men, women, whatever. Maybe you know, but um, Russian dude, alligators, like that. we talked about earlier. I don't know. I can see that. And it was real yeah. hard to well, find an image for was... the story, by the way. Real hard. <laughs> right. uh, I typed in. Uh, there were. <laughs> sorry, go ahead. There were. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> there was a poem, a part of a poem that was found. Um. After the guy was court-martialed. Oh. Part a of a poem? coin? What? A poem? poem. A, a, po- a, po- <laughs> a poem? Poem? <laughs> a poem? A poem. The- <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> the, the dildo poem? <laughs> yeah, it's a poem. <laughs> okay. I'm not up on my dildo uh dildo terminology, Poetry. I guess. I don't know. What, what, what's this poem? It, it, can you read the poem? Uh, poem? <coughs> um I can read it, yeah. Okay. It's the dildo oh, poem poem poem. Okay. poem. <laughs> that sound like, except the sound it day. makes is <laughs> <laughs> When choosing his disciplinary methods, however, the captain's punitive wheels would turn <coughs> devish, devishly clear. Extra uh, PT, more inspections, restriction. No way. These men are getting beat with dildos today. Oh. Um, use canna in hand, he'd open his table drawer. If only, if, it, if only the offender knew what was in store. There were blue ones, red ones, purple and green. Doodads and zidzads, everything in between. He'd make his selection, da, he would say, then lock up the door of his dildonic buffet. At odd hours, he'd patrol to see what was amiss. Comrade, he'd scream, what the hell is this? Uh, why does the commander so have think, a bunch of Wait a minute, dildos? I'm not done. Okay. <laughs> There's more. <laughs> Sweeping his stringers across the bed frame, this is dust, he would laugh. Oh, what a shame. <laughs> Dazed and confused, oh, the soldier shame. would stand. <clears throat> but in a, but a, in a flash on his face, a dildo would land. <laughs> Cap- <laughs> Captain, please, he would say, you're being obtuse. I do not deserve this dildonic abuse. I do not deserve it at night or in morn. I do not deserve this marital age scorning. But the captain would hear no more begs or pleas, and he knocked the soldier down with the Donnie strike to the knees. <laughs> he struck from the left, he struck from the right. He struck upwards, downwards with violent delights. Mm. Satisfied to the brim with the abuse he'd dispatch, he'd toast with his vodka down, down, down the hatch. Drunk, he would sing what a wonderful inspection as he put away the shiny red dildo from his Erection. dildo collection. Oh. <laughs> his collection. This sounds like Dr. Little Seuss, did, kind of. Like, it does. Dr. That's Seuss. what they said. Little did he know, he believed himself in parcel, that soon he'd be called into a bitter court martial. <laughs> Dude, what the hell, his defense said in court. Dildo, seriously? You've lost our support. To the Siberian <laughs> wild, the captain was banished. Save his dildo collection, all his possessions had vanished. <laughs> Did he survive? Ha- some ask. No one knows. Others say, whatever became of his dildo cachet. But the <laughs> legend says you can still hear him on quietest nights, screaming and laughing with violent delights. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not really sure what what is happening here. So where did this? What is this? Is this a real thing? I mean, where did yeah. this poem come from? Oh, but really, like, did you write this? What is this poem? No, I didn't write this. And the phrase "dildonic buffet" like that's <laughs> that should be a title of a book. Dildonic buffet. Oh my god. Dildonic buffet. Hmm. So where did the poem come from? Uh, it came from the, um, my collection. 
Uh, I don't know where. <laughs> Is this in the next Becky Naren book? Come on, uh, man. No, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> uh, man, they used to have um, a Dil- they used to have a Dildonic buffet out here, but it closed. Right. Yeah. Damn it. We used to have one at Sizzler. You know, you'd go on that. If you went on Thursday night, Catfish and Dildonic Buffet. Oh, my God. Fucking um, This is in when the captain was court-martialed. This poem was in his um, <laughs> possession. Shut up, S.J. <laughs> uh, is this a real uh, is this a real news story? <laughs> I mean, yes. I'm just so confused. <laughs> <laughs> Boing! <laughs> I feel like we're being Let's fucked up. Right. <laughs> well, thanks for having me on, guys. <laughs> Boing! <laughs> Boing! <laughs> okay. That's if sad. I had that yacht we talked about earlier, you know what yeah. I would name it, right? Dildonic Buffet. That's right. <laughs> oh my <sighs> god. I'm going to remember that when I get a yacht. So Andy, some little kid's gonna be like, "What does dildonic mean, mommy?" Uh, stay out of my, uh, stay out of the drawers when you go in my bedroom, honey. <laughs> hey, so it's Andy, German. yeah, <laughs> what are you working on now? What's going on now? Dildonic buffet. Oh, I knew you were uh, say I'm working that. on it, dude. If you had any idea how much shit I'm working on, well, then, what's funny? I go see a therapist because, of course, if you read my shit, you'd know this motherfucker has to go to a therapist. But, um. And he always says, you're not taking on any more shit, are you? And I'm like, oh, no. But like, you know, but you know what's funny is now I'm like, on top of all the writing shit, on top of my my job that I have, on top of raising my kid, I'm, I'm like the chairman of the Democrats in my county. I am just became the web editor at uh, Diabolic Magazine. <laughs> I'm uh, on a, a board for a... a um, what do you call that? A film? Um, oh shit! I, all of a sudden, I'm blanking out here. You know, uh, a film festival. Um, I stay really fucking busy, man. But I'm working on a book about astronauts. Believe it or not, I'm working on a book about Elmore Leonard. Um, uh, my book on Stephen King is coming out in like two months. I'm excited about that. Ooh, cool. Mm-hmm. So much. Uh, the Tarantino book is coming out finally. Um, the thing is, I'm waiting. I'm. I had turned it. Oh, and we have this. that. Yeah, I had yeah, turned in the, I had turned in the uh, manuscript, and thinking I wasn't going to get Tarantino because I'd tried for a long time to get him for the book, and then he reached out to me and said, "Do you still want my interview?" And I was like, "Well, yeah." And so I had to reach the publisher, and they were like, "You know, oh, that's fine. You, obviously, it's better for the book if you have Tarantino." Um, but he's still editing that movie, and uh, you know the new Brad Pitt Leonardo DiCaprio movie. <laughs> So this is kind of being stretched on for a while. I mean, it's, it'll be worth it if I get the interview, but yeah, it's all up in the air. Uh, but I'm doing a lot, so that's the mm. answer. Okay, man, that is a lot. Hey! We, we could sorry. dig it anywhere. Uh, SK, anything that grabbed your or interest? Or there's 10 more projects. You know how it is. So Yeah. So how do you manage all of your projects? Sloppily. Very sloppily. I mean, do, well, I mean how, do you, how do you decide what to work on at any given moment? I don't know, dude. It's almost like the throw darts at the thing. Like, I'll have periods where I work a lot on one thing, and then I take a break, and uh, you know, but I, I'm late on a lot of stuff, honestly, uh, because I try to do too much, and I'm really bad with deadlines. You know, um, the Stephen King book's coming out with McFarlane. It was originally supposed to be out in December, but with McFarlane, you know, you um, you have to do your own index, Mm. And that's oh. horrible. Like, I fucking hate that. That's the least. I made the joke to the uh, the lady I had to submit it to that my ex-wife used to do the index. And I joked that that's probably why she left me. But um, <laughs> oh. the index is horrible. And, so anyway, and I then just you had to do it. <laughs> my, so I just finished it today. The book was actually supposed to be out in December and it's late because of me. Um, so now it's got a March release date. I don't know exactly what it is, but I don't know. I really don't know. I just... Do whatever feels right. And so, like, uh, do you say no to anything? <laughs> it seems like no, doesn't it? Well, a lot of it's just me taking on projects, and I take on too much. I just do, and it's the way I've always functioned. I mean, I'm literally working on probably nine books right now. Usually only one piece of fiction at a time, and that'll, 
last quite a while. How how do you go from book to book, like like in your headspace and all that? Like, I don't really know. And there's a you know I'm working on some memoirs with different people. I'm getting ready to start my own memoir. Um, you also have the hundred uh, writers and I have a book that uh, so. Becky's helping me edit. Um, it's uh, where we talk to a hundred authors about their writing habits. That's coming out from Bear Manor. Um, it's just a lot. The astronauts book, you know, was inspired by um, my little girl's really, she's at that stage where she wants to be an astronaut someday. And, you know, when I was a kid, I felt the same way. Well, then, um, yeah, I don't know, we went to the Space Museum and we were looking at the stuff and they had these books in the bookstore. They had a little bookstore and uh, I was looking at the books and I thought, you know what would be cool? I do a lot of interviews. But the Earth I thought, is what flat. I, that book. Did she find I that I know, book? right? How'd they do it, right? <laughs> but I was like, you know. Mm, my I should, Lord. I thought, here I could uh, interview astronauts, you know, from the Mercury and Apollo and Gemini missions that are still alive and get their stories. And and the, the really cool thing about it is, is that it will give my child the opportunity to meet these people, even if it's just over the phone. Mm. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. that's a thing most parents can't offer their kids. And so that's one of the benefits of, of the writing. And I'm just gearing up for that. I have an interview coming up in about two weeks. Uh, he's actually not an astronaut. He was one of the the uh, ground control guys on the Apollo missions. But, yeah, that's pretty cool. It takes a lot more that's research. Cool. Usually I know my subject inside now. This is one I really don't know. But a lot of times, you know, when you write books, uh, nonfiction books, you write about the things you kind of want to know more about because it requires you to really research the fuck out of them. And, mm. You know. That's pretty cool. So. I like that. There you go. It gets you involved, more involved, more engrossed into the subject matter. And, and there, I mean, in a way, your daughter benefited from it as well. That's pretty cool, man. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to uh, dedicate the book to her. So. All right. No. What about no, the, that's, uh, that's really nice. What about the Stephen King book? What's going on with that? Um, it's actually my third book about Stephen King. Um, it, it, and, and there may even be a fourth one. I never set out to do this. Um, let's see. Um, this one is called Perspectives on Stephen King. What it is is it's uh, interviews with uh, authors, experts, and collaborators. Uh, just different people that have written with Stephen King. Other authors like Paul Tremblay that are big fans of Stephen King. Uh, and Joe Lansdale, people like that. So it's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. you know? So maybe you can answer this question then. Since sure. you know so much about why the fuck can't you write an ending? <laughs> you know, I think he, he has, has the with, worst he has some, time. He, he has, has the worst time. Endings, but, but then, Very, like you know, the worst one to me, as far as endings, is the Colorado Kid, like, which is a book I don't particularly like. Mm. But it really has no resolution whatsoever. But you know, he's an author that, for me, I think it's more about the journey, you know, than where you're going. You know, it's like Elmore Leonard had a saying that he hoped that. He, he wrote the kind of books that even if the last page was missing, they would still be a good book. And I think that's kind of it, kind of it you know? I mean. <laughs> so my daughters, when they were uh, young teenagers, they watched uh, It, whatever the original movie right. of Many that certain. was. And they were like loving this movie and it was scaring them in all the right ways. And they get to the end and they go, it's a spider alien what the hell <laughs> <laughs> and they were so pissed they never wanted to see right. it again <laughs> oh, lord right yeah so is there anything about your writing that you would change i'd make a lot more money that's and about how, it i do i do what i want to do i just would make more money and how would you do that i don't know Huh. I would say write a bestseller, but I don't really write bestseller kind of stuff. I mean, I'm, I, I mean, I'm told a lot of times that, you know, I should trim down the language, or I should make them less violent. But, I mean, it really wouldn't be my stuff if I did that. And no. I, at one time, was going to submit to Hard Case Crime, and, hmm. you know, Charles R. Dye, who's the editor, is a really cool guy, but, you know, he doesn't really go for a lot of that kind of stuff, and. I mean, I could tr I could try to write something geared toward them, but I feel like when you're trying to write towards an audience instead of what you really feel, you know, it sort of becomes a watered down version. And so, for the moment, I'm sort of stuck in small publisher limbo. I can feel that. 
Now, if you wanted to, like, is there a genre that you could write that would, uh, you know, make some fast cash? Oh, well, it wouldn't be anything I wrote. I mean, I write crime stuff, and I love writing crime stuff. But, um, you know, I w- this is going to sound really corny, but honest to God, I wish I had a good romance novel in me. I'm not talking Harlequin, but I'm talking, you know, like the the cheesy Nicholas Sparks shit. You oh, know, I like the I, notebook. <laughs> The fucking notebook, man. I, I hate to admit this, but I, I do like the notebook. And I honestly kind of wish I had written it. I, you know, it is what it is, man. You know what you is could a good write that. Yeah, but I just don't think it's really in my wheelhouse. I mean, I have some sad endings that I've thought about for a long time that would be great in a book. But I mean, I don't know. I can't get inspired to actually do it. And if it's something that I don't know if I can do really well, I a lot of times tend to stay away from it more than I probably should. But, mm. you know. I mean, I wrote a Western one time. It was pretty good, but that's just not my thing. You know? Yeah, right? yeah. I mean, you, you do have a Western. You have, you have Western, you have horror, you have uh, nonfiction. So out of all those things that you've written, all those genres, I mean, which one has been, I guess, the most kind, I guess, most rewarding? Uh, in different ways. Well, it's the one thing I'm not, I really know I can't do that very well. But um, <laughs> rewarding as far as, uh, there's different kinds of rewarding here. Monetarily, it's the nonfiction. But um, as far as, you know, the way it makes me feel, the happiness it brings me, it you know, it's the crime fiction. And, you know, there are people that it really resonates with. And, and it, it really means a lot when it's other writers. And it's, when it's other writers I admire, it means a lot. So, I mean, I think I'm on the right path. And there was a long time where I didn't feel like I was a good writer, but I think I'm a good writer. I don't know. I don't, I don't say great writer or anything, but I think I'm good. You know, I mean, I've gotten to the point where everything I write, everything I write gets published. And I mean, you know, and it's not Simon and Schuster or whatever. Although, uh, you know, um, Becky met my friend and mentor, Steve Spagnesi. Um, he, uh, I was just in a book of his that came out through Simon and Schuster, an imprint of them. And he's doing a book on Elton John now, and I've got an essay that's going to be in that. So, I mean, I do write some stuff that gets out there, but it just tends to not be the shit that uh, <laughs> it tends to not be the shit that originates with me. I, I think my tastes are very uh, niche. Yeah, you know? that's okay. Well, I mean, you have like I'm just looking at your nonfiction. Like you have a you have a lot of interest here. I mean, you talk, of course, with Stephen King, uh, but then there's movies of. Shit, man, did you have like porn stars, dirty talk conversations with porn stars? Uh, so you have a lot of interests. Um, I do. You know what's funny? Some of the things I didn't really have a lot of interest in, but I thought they could be interesting books. Like, you know, people will see that I did a book where I interviewed a lot of porn stars and they think, I bet that guy, you know, loves porn. I really don't. I mean, I watch porn like anybody. I watch 10 minutes of it or whatever it takes. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But, but I don't sit and watch them and, and I do think the ones with plots were kind of cool, you know, when I was a kid and I oh, wasn't yeah. supposed to be watching them, They're funny. you know, when they actually tried and gave a shit. But, but you know, what it was, was there were two things there. It was the availability of porn stars as opposed to actual movie stars. And, you know, I wrote it more as a, instead of an inside baseball kind of thing, it was sort of from an outsider's perspective. I'm asking these people questions that I think people that don't know much about porn want to know. Yeah, you know, like the what? shit about fluffers and all that shit, and you know, and it was it was fun. It was a cool book. I stayed at a porn star's house. I think I told you that. What was that like? Um, mm-hmm. It was interesting. Um, I mean, I didn't, we didn't have sex. I kind of wish I could tell you otherwise, but uh, oh. you know, but I didn't. I, I mean, mean, I didn't try. And she acted really camera. Yeah, she acted really. What was funny was she kept telling me, you know, um, she owned her own company, and she kept telling me, you know, none of my I don't allow any of my stars to use drugs, but I could tell she was tweaking the whole time we were together. And she had me in her bedroom at like three in the morning and we were talking, but see, I was trying to write her memoir at the time. And so I was trying to be very professional. And I actually kind of have this feeling that she was sort of, I don't think I'm hot or anything. That's not the point. I think she was offended because so many people try to fuck her that I didn't because I was trying to be the professional writer guy. And right. Well, you know, and it's like, Paint a picture here. What do you mean she was trying? Like, was she was she naked? On like, no, I don't know if she was trying, but I'm just saying she had me in her bedroom okay. at three in the morning, and that's not you know, yeah, 
and she was tweaking. That's not normal. Well, I think that's what you heard me say. Was <laughs> tweaking, not trying. She was tweaking the fuck out. She was on something, uh, and uh, and I I know there were drugs in the house because the um, there was a guy that crashed on the just one of those hangers on. She had hangers ons that stayed in her house, and there was a guy that uh, gave me drugs that was while well, I was there. And uh, party and, uh, favors. There you go. Yeah, he gave me some party favors. So I know that shit was happening, but oh yeah, I don't know. <laughs> of course, but I did books on movies. Uh, some that I didn't really care that much about, but. I'm kind of, there are movies that I'm kind of more intrigued by the making of them, sort of like the porn, you know? Like, I did a book with Herschel Gordon Lewis. He's amazing, but I don't really enjoy watching his films. And I know that sounds like blasphemy to people that do, and I feel bad, but, you know. <laughs> What's going on, SK? Listen you, to him laughing. You, you had a question? No, I just, just no, I, 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 I'm a big, um, a movie fan and really into the behind the scenes stuff and the making right. of and all that, that kind of stuff. Um, what's, what's been your most, um, besides the porn star, what was the weirdest interview you you ever had? Mm. Well, one time, uh, I've had a few weird ones. One time, Tom Wopat from the Dukes of Hazard told me to go fuck myself <laughs> Uh, that was pretty cool. Um, I think it was because the phone was messing up, but we'd already had an interview and the phone messed up. And so we had, and so I called him back and then we had a bad line, but he didn't just cuss. Like he told me to go fuck myself. And I don't know what that was, but I just gave up. And his publicist asked me, you know what, um, how'd that interview go? And I was like, well, he said, fuck you, go fuck yourself, something like that. And, and they were like, oh my God. And so there was that. And I had an interview with Ralph Bakshi one time. And I had to reschedule it because my kid was like in the hospital and he started yelling at me. Um, do you know how inconvenient it is for me to have to change my schedule? And <laughs> I'm well, man, I'm really sorry. And then when I, I interviewed him twice, I can't remember which one it was, but one of the interviews I did, I showed it to him and he says, you made up every word of this interview and it's amazing. <laughs> I fucking love it. <laughs> But I didn't make up any of it. It was literally the shit he said verbatim. You know, and um, so there have been some weird ones. There was one, this is a funny one in a fucked up way. One time I had tried a long time to get an interview with, um, uh, what the fuck is his name? All of a sudden it, it escapes. You know, I had a lot of anesthesia and it kind of fucks with my memory sometimes. But um, the guy that directed Election and a lot of other great movies, shit, all of a sudden I can't think of his name. But I, uh, I was really sick. This is a story I've never told anybody. I was really sick, and I had fought forever to get this interview. So, I and we were interviewing on the phone. So he didn't know, but I was on the toilet while I was interviewing him. That's kind of funny. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and uh, but it was one of those things I couldn't afford to, you know, try to reschedule it because sometimes Alexander you never Payne. get them. You know, Alexander you, Payne. Alexander Payne. That's right. Sideways. A lot of great movies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. About Schmidt. Yeah. What's been your favorite interview that you've done? Uh, oh, there are a lot of them. S. Craig Zoller, the guy that did uh, Brawl and Cell Block 99 mm -hmm. and Bone Tomahawk. I'm a big fan of his. That was really neat. Um, Bone Tomahawk was really good. Bone Tomahawk's fucking awesome. And he's one of my very favorite filmmakers. So to interview him was great. Um, I don't know. I mean, I've interviewed hundreds of people now. Um, Ian McKellen was pretty fucking cool. Oh, cool. I don't know. There have been some guys... I had one with Graham Yost the other day, the guy that uh, was the showrunner for Justified, the TV show. That was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I get to do the shit I really want to do. and I mean, I can't complain, you know. Uh, I don't make a lot of money, but I get to, I get to meet people I want to meet, and I kind of live vicariously through them, if that makes sense. Because I it live in Kansas, and I'm poor. I have a regular life. I don't do shit. <laughs> no, I, I mean you mentioned several times that like it's not making you rich, you're not making all the other money. But right. I mean, are is it making ends meet? Are you able to pay the bills with it? Um, not really. You know, like I had made, I had told you, you know, out of the thirty-seven books, I had one book that made a lot of money. But other than that, I've probably spent more money on my writing than I've made at the end of the day, and it's okay. I mean. This is my love. This is what I do. And it's not to say those books didn't sell at all, but I spend a lot of my money on my writing. Yeah. You know, how do you uh, mean that? How do you mean that? By transcri people don't know. Transcription costs are a motherfucker. Uh, uh, and I, I should transcribe them myself, but 
it takes so much time. And well, I do are you so going to have time to do that? Well, that's what I'm saying. I do so many interviews. Um, I probably do at least five interviews a month. And when they're wow. at least an hour, of, and I write for a lot of magazines and, you know, so I have somebody that helps me, but those, you know, get expensive fast. I have to buy a lot of research materials. Uh, I've got that anthology coming out where we had 26 authors. Um, you know, there are a lot of big name authors in it and I paid some of them, you know, not everybody got paid. So if anybody hears this, they're probably going to be like, why didn't I get paid? Not everybody <laughs> get paid. I would tell you what, most of the time I don't get paid when I was in those, but oh, wow. you know, it's exposure. It's cool to be in a book next to big name authors. And so that's how mm -hmm. they should look at, it. but you know, you're not going to get Joe Lansdale usually to do something for absolutely free. He's great. You know, and he, he gave me a really good, I'm doing a book with him, by the way, um, a nonfiction book he's helping me out with, um, but I, you know, oh, cool. Mark Slade's helping me with that also. Mm -hmm. You know, know who you should interview? Who's that? Jesse's <coughs> hooker. I know. Dude, totally. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> but I don't want to get the play. Oh, you're not, you're not talking about. I wish that I had Jesse's uh, girl, right? Like, Jesse's hooker. <laughs> no. So was your I hooker think, a you talking about You got to know. I, I, I think I they're talking about the, the $20 hooker. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay. You're not talking about Holly then. No, no. Holly's oh, Holly's too expensive for my taste. Right. I mean, I, I don't have enough money for that. <laughs> oh <Ooh>, man. <laughs> if you want to talk to my, you wouldn't want to stick your nose in you, that crack either. <laughs> you have to go under no, a bridge. No, I kind of always wanted. To, I kind of always wanted to do a book just out of curiosity to interview hookers. But you know what would happen was you'd probably get arrested <laughs> for you know buying the hooker. And you're trying to interview them, and the cops like, yeah, right, uh huh, you know. And, <laughs> but I, I think it would be kind of interesting. And I don't. A lot of them probably wouldn't have good answers, you know. Like, I'd rather just fuck, you know. But yeah, no, let me ask some questions. Can uh. I just give you head? No, I want to ask you questions. Like, I don't know that. <laughs> how do you get? And then here, sign this release, Dottie <laughs> or whatever the her name is. And most mm. were probably uh, high or twerking or, or twerking, mm. you know, tweaking. So, I mean, who knows where the conversation's going to go, man? Like, I, I have no idea how the conversation went with the porn star. I mean, it, it was probably wild. They were mostly pretty normal. Um, wow. I'm trying to think. I mean, a, what, the one that was really interesting was um, Mary Carey, the one, you know, that ran for governor of California. Oh, yeah. Um, I interviewed her, and it was not long after that. And she's really ditzy, like really, really ditzy. Yeah. Um, and what was funny is we were making a movie at the time and she was like, I want to be in your movie and you can come and see me and all this stuff. And what was funny was um, then she found out our movie was like a really low budget movie and then she didn't want to see me. And I mean, that's cool. <laughs> but I think it's funny. Wasn't, wasn't there an Italian hooker that actually got elected to some national office? <coughs> I've heard back? that. I don't know. It's crazy. Oh, dear Lord. I mean, is there someone that you would love to interview that you haven't already? Stephen King. That'd be a cool one. You, you haven't interviewed him yet? Oh, I have. He didn't, you know, um, what's interesting, a lot of the people that have written books on him haven't interviewed him. And I mean, there are people that do. Um, you know, like, uh, you know, our mutual friend Stanley Weotter, I think, has interviewed him lots of times, mm -hmm. like maybe 10 he times. Has. Yeah, I think he said a dozen, actually. Um, right. You know, uh, Bev Vincent's interviewed him. There are a lot that do, but he's not an easy get. I was uh, really close to getting an interview with him in 1999 for my director's book. I interviewed 50 directors in that book. And the, the point was Maximum Overdrive is not a very good movie, but... A lot of times a key to getting interviews with people is if you interview them about something other than the thing that everybody wants to interview them about. Like they're more willing to talk about things like that. So anyway, I was pretty close to getting that. And then he got hit by a van. As you oh, might remember. I remember that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. And that really sidelined everything. And, uh, Plot you know, that's twist. Cool. <laughs> right. And I mean, I haven't yeah. actually interviewed Tarantino before we met in, again, 1999. That was a big year. Oh, uh, I wild. met him briefly, and we talked about movies and stuff. That was cool, but I've never actually interviewed him. That'd be cool. And like when you when you like, interview them, like are you doing like face to face or is it over the phone? They're almost always uh, over the phone because I live in Kansas. And nobody yeah. fucking lives here. But I man. mean, I interviewed Kevin Wilmot, who uh, is up for an Oscar 
who wrote Black Klansman, he lives about two hours away from me. Uh, our interview was on the phone, but I met him in Kansas City. Um, mm. It was a guy from the group House of Pain that lives a couple hours away from here. I interviewed him. Uh, you know, so I do some shit, but but hardly anyone lives around here, man. But you're doing a Tarantino interview. Is that right? Coming up? It's supposed mm-hmm. to be, if everything goes right, yeah. Man, It'd be wild. interesting if you can get him to, you know, shut up long enough to ask <laughs> a second question. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? He just, he just, he just goes off. He just go. He just goes off, man. Well, I do it too. So what the fuck can I say? Uh, oh Lord, it could be a fight for a conversation, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> oh Lord, I can see this going badly. <laughs> now, if there was any <coughs> historic person you could bring back to interview, who would it be? Mm. Oh yeah, that's a good one. This isn't the cool answer you're looking for, but I could say this. The one person I'd really like to meet that's dead is the guy that gave me my heart. I know that sounds super corny, but it's the truth. I'd love to know. No, it's not corny. Just who that is, and like to meet them, and you know. Um, but as far as famous people, do you know anything about him? At this point, I don't. I know he was maybe about twenty-one. He was somewhere. He was young, and it was a male. That's really all I know. Uh, I'm at this point where I'm able to write a letter to the family of the donor. I've been kind of waiting, you know, until my head's fully wrapped around it. I think I'm pretty close. I mean, it's a lot to uh, to process, Yeah. you know. Um, but I, I write to them, and then it's all anonymous. And then if they want to reach out to me, they can. But a lot of people don't, you know. And uh, a lot of it's, I think, you know, they know that somebody else is living on with the heart, but they don't want to be reminded every day that their loved one's dead more than they already are. And I get that. I really do. Um, but I don't know. As far as famous people... Shit, I don't know. Elvis would be kind of interesting. I wrote a book about him. Um, Elvis would be cool. That would be cool. Yeah. um, There's a lot of mythology around him that would be interesting to sort out. Right. Oh, yeah, man. (laughs) Yeah, people people get mad about my Elvis book because it kind of makes fun of him. I mean, I like Elvis. I do. But when I was doing research, it became more and more apparent that, like, he really wasn't that bright in real life, I think. And... I know that sounds terrible, but so I, I wasn't really as much making fun of him as just, I wrote it, see, my book is fiction, and I wrote the character sort of as, sort of as I envisioned him, and, you know, like, I was reading one book, and they were talking about how in real life, you know, uh, some, some people in his circle were talking about how he liked to say cocksucker, <laughs> and he would call all of his friends cocksuckers, hey, and cocksucker. one guy was talking about, one guy was talking about how Elvis called his wife a cocksucker and <laughs> well, the guy was well. kind of offended and, and um you know and that shit really <laughs> made me laugh so in my book repeatedly elvis calls people cocksuckers and well you know i, mean, I don't know why people i don't know why people would be offended with elvis presley being not as smart as people think they think he is he's not known <clears throat> for how smart do you think he is he's a, he's right. a rock star <laughs> I, I think mean, i told you this before but my all-time favorite review i've ever had I've had a couple of really fucked up reviews. Oh, we did. But one of my very favorite ones is somebody, mm-hmm. uh, my book, okay, for uh, SK, who doesn't really know, um, my book, which is a novel, is called Elvis Presley, CIA Assassin. Obviously, <laughs> that's bullshit, right? You know it's a joke. Well, somebody right. wrote a review, and they were like, this is not true. This is all lies. Nobody, <laughs> it, it wasn't an actual review, I guess. It was on a, on an Elvis page. But oh my somebody said that, and I thought, who the fuck would buy this and think it's real? You know, and um, was it a verified purchase? <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> that's great. Warning, guys! I want you to know it's not real. Elvis Presley was never a CIA assassin. Okay, guys. Well, and it's got like if they read it. Hey, come on! Right. Well, they've got <laughs> there's aliens and shit in the book. I mean, obviously <laughs> that shit is not real. Oh wait. I thought that was real. Right. He was taken away by aliens, right? <clears throat> well, he gets to meet them, and oh, it's just all this weird shit, and, and it I was mean, fun. Hold on. Back up, back up. We all know that Elvis Presley was abducted by aliens, right? That's how he died? Right. I mean, uh, moved oh, on. Look, he, he didn't I die. did some research. I'm going to tell you, and this is something your, reader, your listeners don't know, but this is true. I did un- unearth this, and I haven't had a chance to tell anybody or write it in a book yet. But okay. Listen, Elvis Presley, Adolf Hitler... And Tupac, 
on a beach in Jamaica right now. It's true. I know. Still alive. <laughs> all of them. And they're making music together. Man. Yeah. Oh, Adolf my Hitler's Lord. Not, Adolf Hitler's music's not quite as good, but, no, you know. No. Well, he's getting up there. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, he's like 107. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. His rhythm's oh, really Lord. shot. <laughs> His oh, rhythm's yeah. all fucked up. On the, I mean, I don't, you know, like, let's be honest, white people's rhythm usually is not very good. I'm going to guess that that German, I don't know, do German people have good rhythm? Uh, I, don't know. I mean, it doesn't seem like it. Like Some Mozart German and bands. Beethoven? Yeah, Mozart <laughs> but I mean, Beethoven. can you see them? They can do that, but do you see them like, dancing really like oh well, not, not ballroom not dancing where you can fake shit but i'm saying like you know like james brown dance. no they have good night clubs, <laughs> but that's about it no. hey wolf gang come on you know <laughs> break, <laughs> break it down that's right, man. <laughs> oh man but but I, yeah that's, that's free, hilarious freestyle's not really in the german <clears throat> wheelhouse right no, probably no. not you have good beer though maybe maybe, maybe he has that i don't know <laughs> I can't fuck with that. You know, the shit with all the hops. People say, this is the good beer. And I'm the I'm the cheap motherfucker that's like, oh, let me get some, you know, Bud Light or something. Yeah, I used to say Natty Light. I went for a long time without drinking. I got some Natty Light a while back, and I was like, wow, this really is shit. But I hadn't had it in so long that my taste buds had kind of wisened up. They were like, oh, dude, this is fucking terrible. You deserve better than this. You didn't stay alive just to try this shit. So anyway, what are you going to do? I know, right? <laughs> All right, fuck that. You know. <laughs> okay, so tell us about the uh, what was it? The the hundred hundred questions for for different authors. What, what's the name of that book? Uh, was it? Uh, it's Methods of Madness. A hundred authors discuss the craft. Okay, so mm -hmm. you get you you ask questions to various authors, right. and right. from all that, what have you learned? What what is the takeaway? Well, the, the sort of the, the main point of it, most writers like to read about other writers' um, habits. You know, to kind of it, uh, it's a thing that fascinates me. It's a thing that I've found that fascinates a lot of writers. But the main point of the book is, you know, there's no one correct way to succeed. You know, and a lot of the writers, and it will not a lot, but a few will say, you know, I don't do second drafts. I would absolutely never advise anybody to do that. Like that just what? sounds right. like awful well, to me, yeah. but they, these are people that do get published. Um, I mean, what? like I can't imagine that. And I feel like even if their yeah, first yeah. drafts are pretty fucking awesome, that the second and third drafts would be better, how? but I don't fucking know, you know, how is that but possible? I guess they don't, they don't do second drafts stuff. and they get published. I don't mm -hmm. know. I try not to think about it cause it hurts my head. Like, hold on. <laughs> When you say published, you mean like self-published or like published? With we don't the, have um, – I mean, I guess there are a couple people in the book that are self-published, but the majority of them are published, published. And okay. I mean, look, you're not getting Joe Lansdale to say he, you know, on his first draft of, you know, Happen Leonard or whatever. I mean, that good – I have to pause here for a minute. Um, really super successful authors, I think, do multiple drafts. That's yeah. just – dude, I mean – it's funny because even showing my beta writer or my beta reader my first draft, I feel really uncomfortable about that. I feel really naked. It's not really good usually for me until I, I don't know, four or five drafts. You know, and yeah. I mean, I don't know. I think that's the general consensus. But the book does show that there are other people that have other ways, and that's cool, whatever. It's just not mine. Well, there's as many ways as there are writers. Yeah. I suppose so. Yeah. 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 <coughs> And apparently, some are good enough to write one draft. One draft. That's right. it, guys. Those are <laughs> fucking it. supermen right there, man. Yeah, no doubt. <sighs> I've I, never met one. No. I mean, there's plenty that say they can, but then you read it, you're like, uh, are you sure? No, this you is can't. It? You're like, no, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I don't think the publisher really read this one, but okay. I mean, that's how you... Mm -hmm. in, uh, I uh, let, me, let me put it this way, though. Um, the people in my anthology, no, they're not first draft people. I right. mean, you know... Right. And now, it's not to diss the first draft people, but they're just generally a lot of times not my people. What other what other advice uh, have you gathered from it? Or other you know, that, that, pretty that good old... about getting authors to answer questions. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's a lot of overlap, as of course there would be. Uh, 
the one thing that most people say, obviously, is to read. You have to read and you have to write. And those are the, the really basics. A lot of people have a lot of different ideas. And there were a lot of cool things I'd never really thought about, um, different techniques, different things. You know, and I think people, when they read it, might come up with, they might find a few things that kind of work uh, work for them or work within the structure of what they're doing. It might give them some ideas, but, you know, um, but the, I, I think the, the overall lesson is, you know, you have to fucking write. I know people that call themselves writers and here's the thing that annoys me. Okay. I have people come up to me all the time. I want to write a book. Okay. What's it about? I don't know. Have you written any of it? No, <laughs> but they want me to help them fucking write a book. I, they, they think uh... it's just this thing where they just want a book and it appears. And that's not how that fucking happens. Everybody mm -hmm. wants to be famous. Nobody wants to do the work. They want to have written a book. Yeah. And I want to say the majority of these are probably people that also don't read books. This is a weird thing because mm -hmm. really everybody thinks that they can be a fucking author. And it's really insulting. I don't yeah. go up to, the, I didn't go up to my heart surgeon and go, yeah, I'm thinking about, uh, I'm thinking about doing some fucking heart transplants tomorrow. They don't realize how fucking insulting it is. You know, and I mean, some of them are genuine. But if yeah. you're 50 and you haven't written a fucking book yet, hey, guess what? You're probably not going to do it, you know? Um, if you do, it's probably not going to get published. It takes most people three, four books, really, honestly, or at least that much worth of writing mm -hmm. to write something that's publishable. Stephen King wrote, like, fucking four books before he got published. You know, um, it's just a thing. You know, some people do are the exception to that rule, but I'm guessing they're one out of a million. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. I mean, and here in the book that you're working on, I mean, you gathered that. I mean, I think because a lot of <coughs> writers, you know, they ask these questions. And they have the same, I guess, I mean, some have the expectation that, oh, writing is going to give you money. You're going to be rich and famous. Right. It's, it's easy to do. Oh, I just want the book. I just want, like, like you mentioned, I just want the book. Uh, well, the I, other thing that pisses me off is that, you know, people talk about how hard it is and shit. Well, it's hard, yes. But I mean, they talk about it like it's just fucking grueling. Well, my thing is, if you don't love it, you're not going to be good at it. Like, yeah. why the fuck are you doing it if you don't love it? Because the advice I give to people, my main advice, if you don't absolutely feel like it's something you have to be doing, fucking don't do it. Do mm -hmm. yourself a favor and your potential readers a favor and get the fuck out. That's true. That's true. The yeah. I think it was I think it was Tiger Woods who said. <laughs> Fall in love with the process and the results will follow. I think that's good advice. Mm -hmm. I think he also said something about fucking a lot of women, but I can't remember what it was. Well, it was no, no, as many, he was like talking about picking them up at, you know, at TGI Fridays or whatever, you know. And well, he gets, they like the golf swing, you know. He, he gets carried away. He no He's a play. swinger. That's right. It, good follow through. That's right. And I mean, good for him. You know, what are you going to do? His father taught him well. <laughs> he did, I guess. <laughs> uh, what was I going to say? Oh, shit. Oh, I was going to say, is that advice actually follows with uh, any sort of hobby, any sort of uh, passion or project, like let's say podcasting like this. I mean, I could be playing like Rainbow Six Siege or some other game right now. Uh, I right. could have been doing that. But no, I, I do this <coughs> podcast. There's other people who do their own podcast, their own live show. Um, and it's like, this isn't making money. This isn't making money to pay the right. bills. You see my hooker, my hooker donations, Andy. You see your hooker donations. You got zero. Right. You got zero added to it. <laughs> well, it's like the hooker. You know, she's giving her money to the pimp. So is she just doing it for the love? You know, is she passionate about what she's doing? Well, Nothing is worse. Doing it for the than rock. Non passionate hooker. That's what, well. There you go. Doing it for the cock for rock. the rock. That's right. Yeah. yeah. You get that. Oh, my lord. Uh, oh my! So, you know what, Becky, we haven't heard enough snorting. You know, we haven't heard. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> snort was. We've heard a lot of <laughs> incredulousness. <laughs> right. Oh my God! Hey, Becky, you be quiet. You be quiet they this episode. Pull, they pull him again. <laughs> we're talking too much, Becky. Becky, no. I feel like we're a bunch of yes. dudes just not letting a chick talk. It's like a come fucking on. sausage party up here. Yeah, come on. <laughs> Say something. Ask something. J jump in. <laughs> <laughs> no, because if I say something, Miss Kay will laugh at me. 
I'm gonna laugh at you anyway. Don't <laughs> blame oh, well, SK. Damned if you do, true. damned if you don't. Why Here. can't I blame him? I blame him for everything else. Damn it! Take so you guys home. gonna watch the? Anybody gonna watch the Super Bowl this weekend? Uh, oh, it's no. like this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's this weekend, but I'm not fucking watching it because I'm sick of the goddamn Patriots. I mean, they're going to win again because they cheat. That's that's. And it. you know what? Like, well, and the thing that pisses me off about them is I will give them the credit that they're due. I mean, they've done something that no other team has done, but, and will it probably ever do again. And yeah, they do cheat. The part that pisses me off is it's like Barry Bonds, okay? They cheat, but they were good enough that they didn't have to fucking cheat. So the mm-hmm. thing is, do you really literally have to win every fucking game, you selfish fucks? You know, I mean, it's like, Jesus Christ. You're already the best in the fucking league every year, and then you have to fucking deflate balls and shit. Yeah. Fuck you. Oh, you know. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Tell us how you really feel. <laughs> well, the thing, one of the things I used to really admire about the NFL officiating was that they were, uh-huh. they were, they tend back in the you know 80s and 90s at least they were pretty damn objective. They didn't play favorites. No. And that has really changed. Oh, yeah, Especially man. with Tom Brady, dude. Like, yeah. it's, it's like that thing. I don't know if you, you know, follow the NBA much, and I don't. I stopped a lot. because of the I officials. Stopped. Well, it's I was going to say, you remember the, they used to talk about the Jordan rules. And yeah. Michael Jordan was the best player in the game, hands down. But they would give him calls that they wouldn't give anybody else. And I think Brady gets, I think the Patriots get those same fucking calls. I do, too. But mm-hmm. the officiating shitty anyway now. I mean, there were bad calls in both games last weekend. I'm. You know, and I, yeah, I live in Kansas. I'm a Cowboys fan though, but I do follow the Chiefs because I grew up in a Chiefs household. The Cowboys, I wasn't sad when they lost because I didn't fucking think they were good enough to be where they were at anyway, so fuck it. But the Chiefs were really fucking good. And to watch them get beat by them sons of bitches again, I was just like, man, I'm done. That was the most invested I had been in a football game in 10 years. Mm. And and I, you know, and then I went right back to not giving a shit. <laughs> well, yeah. All right, I got a question for you. Okay, what's all the right. Question? What's the worst book you have ever read? Ugh. Um, you know, I kept hearing about uh, Fifty Shades. Fifty Shades is pretty <laughs> bad. Twilight's pretty bad. Those are ones I just checked out to see what the fuck they were. And right. Yeah. I mean, here's the thing. Fifty Shades started out as Twilight fan fiction. Yeah. And Twilight's pretty shitty to start with. So it's like a, a copy of a 10th grade copy to start with. Mm-hmm. You know, um, our 10th generation copy. I mean, it was, the writing is fucking terrible in both of those. Probably a first but, draft. Probably a first draft. Probably, probably that's <laughs> a first draft. That exception <laughs> to the rule. You know, mm-hmm. and I mean, I guess on some level the stories were, were okay, but... You know, not wholly original or whatever, but they were okay. But the writing is fucking garbage, man. <coughs> oh yeah, it's horrible. Yeah, and Fifty Shades, <coughs> man, it's just like, I, how could it get worse? But I did watch the first movie. But do you know why? I have the biggest crush on that chick. What is her name? It's Dakota Dakota Johnson. Uh, Holy fuck! Yeah. And yes, she has small breasts. I, I'm not a breast guy. I don't really care. But she's fucking gorgeous. I don't care. I'll watch her. Get spanked all day long. I don't even give a shit. <laughs> I'm not even into spanking. You know what? I don't care. It had my attention and it had my penis of attention. So it was yeah, okay. Man. Same way. Same way. Right. I can't lie. I saw it too. I saw it too. But I couldn't bring myself to watch the sequels, man. No, no, no. I was done with that. I was <laughs> like, okay. Yeah, I watched the first one. I, I think we're good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is there anything that you won't write about? That you just say, I just cannot. Well, you write know, about like that. I always, I always talk about, like I think you know, anything under the sun is 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 okay to write, um, but you you know, because I feel like if it happens in real life, it's probably okay to write about it. But um, you know, I could never see myself writing about a pedophile. I could never see yeah. myself, you know, and especially like the thing is, you know, like somebody got on me because um, a book I wrote had the n-word in it well you yeah. know what the protagonist is the black guy he's the good guy it's yeah. the bad guys mm-hmm. that are fucking saying it you know i feel like right. 
it's what the it's the difference between what makes your good guys good and what makes the bad guys bad. People yeah. think that anything right. you write, you are endorsing, but that's not the case. No, and, not at all. And, and so I would ask them, you know, do you think George Lucas thinks it's okay? He advocates it's okay to destroy an entire planet, you know, because they blew <laughs> up fucking Tatooine or whatever, you know? Mm-hmm. And it's like, you know, and, and people go, it's not the same. But come on, man. You know, right. it's like, I mean, I, I get it to a degree, but. It's yeah, like a double I, standard almost. <clears throat> I mean, I just oh, feel yeah, like they have. that's where they treat it anyway. Right. <sighs> but it, <sighs> what's the what's what's the strangest thing a fan has ever given you or asked you for? Hmm. I don't know. I mean, I'd like to say blowjob, but that's not really a thing. Um, <laughs> well, try to I raise mean, because some I, hooker money. Because well, I've been married the majority of the time, you know, I've been writing, so. You know, there weren't a lot of uh, fan experiences or anything. I, you know, I really don't know. Um, compliments are always, I know that sounds weird, but just, and it's not that exciting, but just receiving compliments on my work blows my mind because I never thought I would get to a point where anybody would even be reading my shit, let alone strangers in some other country or something. Like, that's fucking weird. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Getting the feedback from someone who's like, you know, just like he said, a stranger, a stranger in another country. Uh, it does help, man. Have you <clears throat> have you been recognized in public? Just out in public? No, um, no, I haven't. Um, I've had some interesting experiences. I mean, I had a. Well, this is kind of cool. I've had um, doctors and nurses that have brought books to me. You know, to I've, you know, to sign and shit stuff like that's kind of interesting, but. Oh, wow. No, and I've had people, you know, contact me, and it's usually other writers that, you know, like I've had people that were really big fans of like nonfiction books that I wrote that have been out there for years and years and years, and and it's always interesting. And, and I realize, you know, when I talk to the nonfiction writers that inspired me to write nonfiction, that you know they're really still shocked when they hear these things. So, you know, it, it it's rewarding. So the doctors and nurses, you know, they're like, can you sign this before surgery? Right. right. <laughs> oh, oh it's, God. <laughs> well, it's funny. I was on a date and um, I uh, and this girl wanted to read one of my books and I gave it to her. And uh, but I made the joke, you know, she wanted me to sign it. And I made the joke. We'll have to wait till the second date. Um, you know, that way you won't disappear. We'll see if you stick around and then I'll sign it. I ended up signing it and she did stick around, which is great. But, you know, um, but what was funny was it was one of those first date things and I was kind of nervous and I actually forgot her name, which was funny <laughs> because you go to write oh it and God. I was like, oh, fuck, I don't, re- I don't remember her name. And, you know, um, yeah, see, that's the thing. I think I told you this before, too, you know, but I mean, it may not be the same people listening. I've had a lot of crazy things happen in my life. And when. I tell people I'm always afraid they're going to think I'm making them up. But the difference between myself and people that make up their stories is their stories usually end up with something good happening to them. My real life stories almost always end up with something fucked up at the end. Like they start Mm -hmm. out as this, oh, I bet that's cool. And it ends up with, it's like, I bet staying at a porn star's house was really cool. But it ends up with her not talking to me and me being stranded in Los Angeles with a plane Uh. ticket that's two weeks away. And uh, not being able to interview her and having to fill two fucking weeks. I mean, that's uh, the kind what? of shit that happens in my life. Oh, yeah. man. I feel like we missed. Uh, so I definitely need to get a copy of that book. One, because uh, I'm kind of a, you know, uh, I was just, yeah, yeah I, definitely really, I, did, I definitely want to get that book. I want to know the confessions of some porn stars. That's what I want to know. No, for real, though. Yeah, I, you're a fan. I'm a right. fan, you could say. Leave it at that. <laughs> There were a couple, <laughs> though I can say I was a fan of. I mean, you know, not in the 90s, you know, but it was more from magazines and stuff like, you know, when people actually read magazines or jerked off to magazines yeah, or whatever yeah. they did to magazines, you know. And um, and I used to read Club Magazine. That was a big thing because I worked Club. at a gas station oh. right when I got out of high school for a while when I was in college <laughs> and they would carry Club. So I would sit there and I'd look at it and steal a copy and, you know, and I and ended up with a pretty good Club collection for a while and. So I would see these people like Asia Carrera, who I was in love with, or yeah. Jill Kelly. You know, Jill Kelly was like a, 
supposedly an editor for a while, but I think it was, you know, more just to put her name on it. And, yeah. you know, and so I'd meet these people. And it was kind of fucking cool. And, you know, and it was, it was Jill Kelly. I was in her bedroom. You know, that was great because I can't tell you how many times I'd masturbated to her in my life. And <laughs> she was a foot away from me. This was yep. great. And you weren't even but, hitting uh, on her. You were being professional. No, I don't know how you did that. I was like, oh, my that God. That was a big mistake, man. And she probably would have said no. I don't know. But you know what? In my mind, I like to think she would have said yes. <laughs> well, she she left you stranded probably because you said no, man. You, she had issues. I mean, you know, well, she was cool, and I won't, you know, really say bad things about her. But but I will say this: um, what was interesting, I should have known. I was going to do her memoir, and she does have a life story that's really interesting. And to this date, no one has written that book. But I think the reason is there are things that she's not ready to touch on, and I should have known because I'm standing in her office earlier in that day. And she opens up a drawer and she shows me, and it's filled with books, right, by other authors, just books that they had written. And she's like, these are books by all the other authors that wanted to write my book. And, and then she said something about um, that some of them had actually, she was going to let them write her book. And, and I'm, instead of thinking, red flag, she's going to bail, I, should, I thought, you know, my head gets big and I'm like, yeah. I'm the guy she wants to write her fucking book. Well, <laughs> then my book ends up in that fucking drawer, and she's probably had to get like a new desk since then with more drawers. I don't know. Yeah. But... <laughs> Holy hell, man! Oh her life God. story. But like her husband was a porn star. I think his name was Cal Jammer. Which Damn. The, there's a porn name Jammer, and right. um, and like you say, what well, they... Cal Jammer? What? what was his name? Cal C A L, like Cal oh. Ripken. Oh, okay. But he they split up, and he showed up on her porch in the rain. And when she answered, he blew out his brains in front of her. I mean, that's some heavy what? shit, right? And and it's interesting because a lot of people don't seem to know who Jill Kelly is anymore. But, you know, she was the second biggest female porn star in the 1990s behind um, Jenna Jameson. Everybody knows Jenna, but Jenna does all these crazy things. And, you know, um, and she had a book that was really big that sort of started that trend. I don't think any of the other ones were as big. And, you, you know, I can uh, I don't know if you've read Jenna Jameson's book. But no. I can sum it up in like three sentences. And it's, I got raped. And then some shit happened. And then I got raped. And I, I, I mean, it's fucked up. Like, there's rape is not a funny thing. No. But almost all of her book just keeps going back to that. And I kind of get it. But it was like almost like she was exploiting it in a weird way. I don't know. It was, huh. I don't know. And Jenna Jameson's all fucked up, so I don't really care what she thinks. So, well, and your book, your book was shitty, Jim and Jameson. I don't, Jim and Jameson. I don't. The, uh, the oh man, like the we stereotype. just lost her as a viewer, right? <laughs> 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 now it's down to forty nine <laughs> listeners. <laughs> it, it is the stereotype, though, you know, with with porn stars that they're they're fucked up in the head. Like the expectation would be hmm. that they're kind of fucked up in the head because, like, I think I most of them were though, honestly, like. A lot of them would talk about how empowering it was to women that they were doing porn. Yeah. And I get the idea behind that, but then a lot of them end up spiraling into fucking drug abuse and all yeah. this stuff. And I mean, you're empowering yourself to, I mean, it's fine if you want to do that. That's fine. I don't give a shit. And, you know, you should have the right to do that. But I'm just saying, I don't know it's, you know, should be your career goal. Um, yeah. I mean, I get the two. Or a man uh, or a woman. It's just not a sexual thing. I mean, I just, you know, uh, yeah, and and a lot of there are some that are pretty together. I mean, Nina Hartley has been in the business forever, you know, and she's no. in like Boogie Nights and all mm. kinds of shit, you know, and and she's fantastic. She's got degrees and she's written books and she's one of the smartest. Asia Carrera has one of the highest fucking IQs of anybody I've ever met. Actually, you quite know, a few and of them have degrees. Uh, there's uh, I don't have the list in front of me, but I had that for a whole other show I was doing. Uh, I had to look it look it <laughs> up, but a few they. Had, a few of them actually have like PhDs, and they, I mean they they are <coughs> they're educated, um, right. and it's just there's more money, I guess, quicker money, if you will, uh, in that industry, and it's like okay, but there's also drugs, but, you know, and and I'm not going to knock them for that. I mean, you know, I like I don't want to sound like I'm knocking them, but I will I would say that I would would advise my children not to be porn stars. I mean, and let's you know. be clear, just because you have a college education doesn't mean you aren't fucked in the head. Well, true. This is true. true. I mean, this is oh, true. I have a, I have a bachelor's. I'm kind of fucked in the head. See? <laughs> hey, here's a, here's a weird segue for you. 
Um, I, I don't think we talked about this before, but an interesting fact, I'm actually in three movies, not porn movies, but I'm in three regular movies with Ron Jeremy. <laughs> no, wait, 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 wait. Yeah. You're in three movies. Isn't that wild? Oh. Oh. Are you in Boondock Saints? What? <laughs> <laughs> I wish I was in Boondock Saints. I, people knock that movie now. I don't give a fuck. No, I like that's them. a good movie. That is that's a good movie. I like it, too. But, um, no, I'm in... He had a vocal... He just had a voice cameo in the first one. He had a vocal cameo in... Uh, this um, kind of shitty trauma movie that I produced and was in called Zombie Geddon. And then there was a movie called Slaughter Party, which was an ev- it was it really was a shitty one. I'm I'm kind of proud in some ways of Zombie Geddon, even though it's not a good movie. I was proud of what we did. Slaughter Party, I'm not proud of any of it. And but um, he's in it, and I actually wrote his dialogue, which is kind of funny. Um, and one, well, the cool thing about the other one was I got to write dialogue for Tom, Tom Savini. I didn't write that movie, but I wrote a couple scenes and uh, did not receive credit for them. And now, in some ways, I'm kind of thankful for it. But, uh, <laughs> but I mean, to see, like, I grew up on, you know, Tom Savini was in a lot of great movies I loved, and and you know, he was great in From Dust Till Dawn, which was another Tarantino written movie. So to see him deliver lines I wrote, I thought was pretty cool. And then I'm that just, is cool. and then I've got a movie that's just coming out. Um, called uh, Ab- Abaddon, I think is it, or Abaddon. I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but Abaddon. I think I think I, think I have. I think I have a line in it. Um, I mean, it was just a little thing. It was just kind of a favor to the director, and but uh, Ron Jeremy's in it. So, mm. well, so it? I have the weird distinction of being in three movies with Ron Jeremy and being one of the few stars that's been in a movie. Or stars, I'm not a star, but one of the few people that have been in a movie with Ron Jeremy three times and have not gotten fucked by Ron Jeremy, which I also take <laughs> oh, as Oh, my God. But you didn't like... <laughs> No. Yeah, it's not my thing. I mean, not even saying the gay thing, but it's like, even if I was gay, <laughs> who the fuck wants to take a 12-inch dick? I That does not seem like no, a good no. thing to me. I don't oh, know. Oh, God. You'd be impaled. Well, first of all, that's not even the first problem. Is that it? man is well, and he's ugly as fuck. No. That's the other problem. But wow. well, that's that's the first problem. That's why he was so great. He was like a uh, inspiration. No. He, he gave hope. Did I tell no. you? I I tried to write his memoir one time, and he that told me Ugh. he told me whoever writes my memoir has got to get me a million dollars up front. And I <laughs> said, well, that's never going to happen. And so that didn't happen. I saw years later a book came out that somebody wrote with him. I guarantee fucking to you he did not get a million dollars, but eh, yeah. whatever. Well, right place. It would have been a right fun time. book. I mean, you know, it would have been a fun yeah. book, but it would have been. It, he had he has a documentary that's pretty interesting. He too. does have a cool documentary. Man. And it's Ugh. interesting how many movies he's uh, you know, like regular movies he's at least filmed scenes for. Uh, mm. studios have cut him out of a hell of a lot of oh, them. Oh yeah. Yeah. He's shot stuff for a he's lot creepy. of movies. <laughs> Come on, man. You can work you with You know him. there's a picture of his face on the end of your Cthulhu dildo. You know damn well. <laughs> <laughs> Dildonic. Um, okay. <laughs> oh, Ugh. man. Uh, so, you know, one there's last... no way. We're kind of running uh, out of time here, but uh, we... Uh, <coughs> no! I know, right? I mean, we can go out forever, but... Kind of, oh, that's, that's a great thing. That's a great thing with Andy, you know? You can talk, pretty much talk forever. I could talk to. Uh, I'm sorry, I could talk way too much. If I really wanted to. Well, that's the thing, though. When you, I've had a really crazy life, and it's, it's not all good or whatever. But I mean, I have a lot of fucked up stories, and you know, we get to talking about them. There's a lot to tell, you know. Exactly. I mean, that's why. Uh, I mean, there's a few guests. They're definitely. Welcome <coughs> back. Oh, I, first of all, actually, all the guests are welcome back anytime they want. Um, but man, you have so much material. It's like, pff, all right. Well, that's why talk. I gotta write. I gotta write this memoir, man. I've gotta write it. So we've had a lot of good guests, but there are some guests that you know are just family. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And Andy's one of them. I mean, hell, the first episode he was on, we talked about ass eating or something, and he was like, "Oh man, you yes, you did." Can't, can't link me to that. You know, it's about reputation, blah blah blah. But then <laughs> this episode but starts then- off with. <laughs> <laughs> Sniffing right. ass. Yeah. Right. <laughs> oh there you God. go. Lowering the so, bar. <laughs> I have one more question. Uh, yeah. No, you don't. Yeah, I do. 
<laughs> no, you know. Yeah, no, it's he a, sounds mischievous with this question too. No, it's a, he it's probably a, is. It's a solid question. All right. Oh God, and, that's so scary. So, um, <laughs> when when you met uh, your wife, did she know? Did she know you as a writer before? Was she like? Did well, she, I'd have or, to say which wife because I've been married three yeah. times. Uh, well, let's say the current one. <laughs> <laughs> well, at the moment I'm divorced, so I'm okay. looking for the so, next one. But um, ah. no, um, you know, I, I really wasn't a writer. Writer. Uh, I mean, I was, I guess, but you know, the Only first a wife. Dozen books. The first <laughs> wife. I was right. The first wife I was married to actually twice, so it's not like there were three wives, but. Um, you know, I wanted to be a writer. I was still trying to find my voice. I was still trying to figure out where I was going. Um, so I did some books then. When I met my second wife, um, you know, uh, she kind of was my beta reader for a while. Um, and that was great. Um, but, you know, it, it really wasn't because of the writing or anything. I mean, I was, I still was, I was doing stuff, but I wasn't um, where I wanted to be yet. Mm -hmm. And I'm not that I'm entirely where there now, but. You know, um, so that's that. Hmm. I feel like I say um a lot, and I hate that. And I know it because if I go back to transcribe <laughs> one of my interviews, it's like um, um, um. Uh, and, it, it and obviously you don't, you don't it type happens. in the ums. It's, it's a live show. People say ums and oh, it happens. It's, it's and right. it makes me go, I'll snore, oh my God, so I must you can be. say um. Right. I feel like I'm, I must sound incredibly... <laughs> unintelligent when I say um 8,003 times, but no, you one, thing, one thing I'll do since we have some time, we're kind of over, but if there's any last questions in the chat, feel free to put that in there. I think there's a few people watching. Um, and they're like, will, will you just get out? That'll be the question. Will you just go? <laughs> and, and while we wait for that, uh, <coughs> what, what was the last horror movie you watch? Mm, actually, it was Bird Box, which... Uh, I kind of like Bird really? Box. You know, I mean, I don't think it was the best horror movie ever oh, or anything. Shit. But I thought it was fun. I mean, I don't give a fuck. I, and it, the price was good, you know. It, it was free. <laughs> yeah. I hear the book is pretty good, though. I haven't read the book, but I hear the book is good. I didn't hate Bird Box, though. I mean, I know it's cool to hate on it, and I don't think it was, you know, um, The Exorcist or The Shining or anything, but it was okay. I mean, it I liked has, Reddit. has a lot of problems. I did like Reddit. I mean, what, I mean, it's... It's interesting to me, though, how it's so hard to please the horror community. No matter what the fuck comes mm -hmm. out, people will backlash against it. You know, because when I saw Hereditary, I was like, this is fucking great. But then, and there, and there were a lot of people saying that. And then within months, there were people like, oh, the ending sucks. Mm -hmm. Well, again, I would put that back to the thing we talked about Stephen King. I thought the journey to get there was pretty great. The ending did suck to Hereditary, but... I thought, it, you know, and people don't like, apparently a lot of people don't like movies with a lot of tension and dread. They want those fucking jump scares. But that is the thing I absolutely hate. Is, oh, I hate Oh, my those. God. I hate that. I think it's cheap and mm -hmm. exploitative. Yes. You know? Yeah. I hate those. I like those movies with a real sense of dread, you know? And most of them, I like 70s horror movies a lot. Oh, yeah. You know, where they cool. have very atmospheric music and they were just really creepy. Even when they were shitty movies. They were kind of creepy. Things like The Car, you know, which weirdly enough has a fucking sequel now that takes place in the future. And I, that is so really? on the list of movies I have to not watch. But, hmm. yeah, that's weird. Lately, we've been, um, I've been streaming hmm. like, public domain horror movies on this channel during the day. Oh, just, yeah. some, just kind of filler. But uh, I don't know, man. I'm kind of <coughs> liking it. I'm, it's been a while since I've... Well, actually, many of them was like my first time watching them. Like, oh, White Zombie. Oh, I never. I, right. I was like, White Zombie's cool. I was like, man, this movie is pretty cool. Um, the. What are the other ones? The Cabinet of Carl. Dr. Calig Dr. Caligari. Yeah. yeah. That was mm -hmm. trippy. That's interesting. Well, some of the stuff that they did, and it was interesting, especially when you consider the era, you know, in which it was made. There's some kind of. Cool visual stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I, I, as far as the older stuff, though, I do like uh, the original Nosferatu. Nosferatu, And I yeah. do like the Werner Herzog mm -hmm. version, too. I think that's pretty cool. I know some people are like, nah, but no, I, I like both of them. 
Let's see. Uh, no other questions in the chat. I do apologize for that. All right, fuck you, people in the chat. Damn, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I'm just kidding. Uh, Mr. Ross. Uh, or Andy Ross. Well, they're going to be like, well, that was, see, this will, this will end up being like hereditary. It'll be a good journey to get there and a terrible <laughs> ending to make one fuck you to the audience. Uh. <laughs> I didn't mean it, audience. Please forgive me, all 49 of you. I'm so sorry. <laughs> You are right. so bad. <laughs> We're going to get this up to 53, though. I'm telling you. All right. Well, Andy Roush, man, it's great having you on. Feel free to- it's great being back. You fuckers are crazy. Feel free to come back mm-hmm. anytime, uh, especially when, when those other books come out. You come back in. We talk about it. Um, for everyone watching, okay. if you haven't followed already, follow. Let's get that goal. Let's reach it so that we get the gift card, or someone will, and I get my ass crack waxed. All right. Well, Y'all take it easy. Night. Bye. Bye bye. Thank you.